On December 20th, 2021, an Emirates Boeing 777 carrying up to 354 people nearly crashed just after takeoff from Dubai. This close call took place just days ago, but already details are emerging which raise serious questions about pilots' reliance on automation and about the safety culture inside one of the world's premier airlines. This may turn out to be one of the most interesting human factors case studies in recent memory. Emirates Flight 231 pushed back from Terminal 3 of Dubai International Airport at just before 3am on December 20th, 2021. The flight was bound for Washington DC, a 14-hour journey. Because of the length of this flight, there were four pilots on board. Two pilots would fly the departure out of Dubai, and at some point during the flight, the so-called relief crew would take over. The aircraft, a four-year-old Boeing 777, had arrived in from Zurich two days previously. The 777 is a highly modern and technologically sophisticated airliner, and is extremely popular with airlines around the world for its safety and fuel efficiency. Emirates is the world's largest operator of the 777, with 153 of the aircraft in service. As Flight 231 taxied out to runway 30 right at Dubai, the crew were likely completing their before takeoff checklists. The weather was excellent for flying. The skies were clear, the temperature was 21 degrees Celsius, and there was no wind. At 9 minutes past 3 in the morning, the pilots lined up on the runway and powered up the engines for takeoff. They started rolling down the runway and quickly reached their usual takeoff speed of 270 km per hour. However, they didn't take off at this point. Instead, they continued barreling down the runway, building speed. A few seconds later, travelling at 400 km per hour, they ran off the end of the runway and finally brought the plane into the air. At this point, however, rather than climbing safely away from the ground, the pilots were now flying just 75 feet over the tops of the residential buildings to the northwest of Dubai Airport at nearly 500 km an hour. 75 feet is less than the wingspan of a 777. They continued down this flight path, narrowly avoiding collision with apartment buildings in the densely populated Dubai suburb of Deira. A few seconds later, as they flew over the coast, they began a steep climb and resumed flying their normal departure route. Rather than turning back to Dubai, the crew continued their 14 and a half hour flight to Washington DC, touching down at Washington Dulles Airport at 9.30 in the morning local time. There are reports that the aircraft had sustained damage on takeoff, and after returning to Dubai as usual later that day, the aircraft was grounded for four days and inspected for damage. Initial reports indicated that all four pilots on board had been fired, but it has since emerged that this appears not to have been the case. It's hard to imagine what could have caused such a close call, but a big clue emerged a week after the incident, when Emirates released a NOTAM, or Notice to Airmen, alerting all of its pilots to a potential issue. This read as follows. In plain English, Emirates is telling, or in their words, reminding, their pilots, not to change the altitude in the autopilot panel after they land. They say that there have been times when planes have had issues on takeoff after previous crews had set the autopilot altitude to zero. It is probably safe to assume that the incident with Emirates Flight 231, which occurred just seven days before this NOTAM, was one of those times. It could be inferred from this NOTAM that the previous crew on Flight 231 had set the autopilot altitude to zero after landing at Dubai, and that the new pilots who were to take this aircraft to Washington didn't notice this at any point before departure. If true, this is a serious failing on their part, and it's all the worse if, as is possible in this case, there were four pilots in the cockpit at the time. While we don't have all the details yet, it's quite probable that human error, or more bluntly, a series of nearly catastrophic mistakes, took place on this night. I say series of mistakes because it is standard procedure to check the altitude setting on the mode control panel a number of times before takeoff. This altitude is usually first set by the pilots after they receive their initial departure clearance from air traffic control, and it's then verified at numerous points before takeoff. It could also be surmised from the Emirates NOTAM that during their takeoff, the pilots blindly followed the instructions on the flight director, which takes information from the autopilot to guide the pilot's inputs on the controls. The flight director consists of a pink vertical and horizontal bar on the primary flight display in front of each pilot. It shows the pilot flying where to point the nose and where the wing should be in order to fly the plane in accordance with the flight plan. If the altitude on the autopilot has been set to zero, then the flight director would have been resting on the horizon of the primary flight display, rather than directing them to bring the nose up into the air. In other words, whichever pilot was flying the plane may have been blindly following the instruments, rather than using their common sense, and lifting off when the plane reached takeoff speed. If this scenario is correct, it also means that the pilot not flying, also known as the pilot monitoring, wasn't doing a very good job of monitoring, although it might be said that they were doing a very good job of not flying. It was only when the aircraft had gone off the end of the runway that the pilots finally became airborne. Despite this, they didn't start to climb. 
Instead, they flew right over the ground, hundreds of kilometers an hour faster than normal, at less than the height of their own wingspan. Again, a scenario which fits this is that whoever was flying the aircraft was slavishly following the flight director, which was telling them to fly into the ground. It is not yet clear what caused the pilots to finally pull up and fly to safety when they reached the coast, but each moment before they had done that, the aircraft was mere seconds away from crashing, killing hundreds on board the plane and many more on the ground. This could easily have become the worst air crash in the century so far. This close call raises serious questions about pilots' reliance on automation. Is it possible that the crew of this flight had become so complacent and so used to blindly following the autopilot that they simply ignored fundamental information like their airspeed and altitude? It is unlikely that this problem was mechanical, because if it was, the crew would have returned immediately to Dubai, not wanting to risk a recurrence of this issue out over the Atlantic Ocean. A trawl through the online forums where professional pilots have been discussing this incident suggests that an issue known as automation dependency may well have been the culprit in this incident. At Emirates in particular, high reliance on automation is a well-known feature of both training and standard operating procedures. Emirates pilots are taught to use the highest mode of automation available to them at almost every portion of the flight. Reportedly, it's even common practice for pilots flying a visual approach to input the approach into their flight management computer and allow the autopilot to fly it. At most, they may fly it by hand, but will follow the flight director while doing this, rather than looking out the windscreen. Even in an industry where reliance on automation is increasing, this is an extreme example. Practices like this degrade manual flying skills, putting pilots in a position where, over time, they lose confidence in their ability to fly, and instead become automation managers. This is in stark contrast to the way airlines operate in the United States, where manual flying is encouraged in order to maintain handling skills. In the US, pilots regularly fly manually to high altitude after departure, then engage the autopilot and turn it off during the initial descent, rather than a short final like in Europe and other parts of the world. In the US, pilots use automation as a tool to reduce workload when it's needed, but not as a matter of course. The main focus is on flying the aircraft. Automation management is secondary. The danger in this automation dependence is clearly illustrated by close calls like that of Emirates Flight 231. When pilots are trained to fly not by the so-called raw data of altitude, airspeed, pitch and power, but rather to blindly follow high-level automation, they are left in the lurch any time that the automation has not been set up correctly. In the case of Flight 231, the pilots should have reverted to very basic flying skills when they noticed that the flight director was giving nonsensical instructions. When they had reached takeoff speed and the flight director was still stuck on the horizon, they should have ignored this and brought the plane into the air regardless. They should have then flown the aircraft by hand, continuing to ignore the flight director, and then begun to troubleshoot the issue once they were safely climbing away from the ground. The fact that this crew let the aircraft go off the end of the runway before lifting off suggests that there was a stunning, and in this case, nearly fatal lack of common sense on the flight deck. What's more, the fact that there were potentially as much as four pilots in the cockpit at the time means that this was not likely a simple case of bad flying by one pilot. Rather, it indicates that a much broader issue is at play, involving grossly lacking crew resource management. All of what we know so far about this incident points back to the training culture within the airline, and even within the industry more generally. This problem of automation dependence is compounded by the fact that long-haul pilots perform far fewer takeoffs and landings per month than short-haul pilots. A much higher percentage of their day is taken up by cruise flight, which involves monitoring the performance of the aircraft and its progress along the flight route. By contrast, Short-haul pilots spend a lot more of their time in high workload situations near takeoff and landing, and get more hands-on experience flying the aircraft. Over time, long-haul pilots can lose touch with their aircraft, and can come to see their jobs more as managers of aircraft systems than as pilots of flying machines. It's also worth noting that this flight was late at night, and fatigue may well have been a factor too. In a few weeks, this whole incident will have been forgotten about by the news media. But it's worth remembering how close this flight came to becoming an all-out disaster, if anything like the scenarios presented in this episode turn out to be accurate, then serious problems with pilot training and company safety culture are to blame for this close call. Emirates has an excellent safety record and is one of the most rigorous pilot selection and training processes in the world. Its fleet is highly modern and well maintained, but cracks are beginning to show in this crucial area of automation dependence and crew resource management. This was far from the first incidents of its kind at Emirates. The airline has had a number of serious close calls over the last four years, some of which have been nearly fatal. In 2016, a 777 carrying 300 people crashed on landing in Dubai after the pilots mismanaged the automation during a botched go-round attempt. The aircraft burst into flames after landing and everyone on board was evacuated. 32 people were injured in this incident, including four seriously, and one firefighter died when the center wing tank exploded during the post-crash fire. 
Emirates are by no means alone in this problem of automation dependency. The degradation of manual flying skills has been a known issue since at least the 1990s, and a number of high-profile crashes have resulted from this very problem. Recent examples include Air France Flight 447, which crashed off the coast of Brazil in 2009, killing all 228 people on board, and Asiana Flight 214, which crashed just short of the runway at San Francisco in 2013, injuring 187 passengers and killing three. Close calls like that of Emirates Flight 231 show that this problem is still with us, and that unless big changes are made to the way pilots are trained, we may not be long away from another fatal accident. If you found this video interesting, subscribe for weekly air accident videos. You can now support the channel and get early access to new videos by clicking the join button. Channel members also get a number of other cool perks, so take a look at what's on offer. As always, if you have any ideas for future episodes, let me know in the comments section. Thanks again for watching.